On the Healthy Human Revolution podcast, Dr. Lori Marbus interviews nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests whose informative and inspiring stories will empower you with the knowledge to transform your life and health. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus, and today I'm so excited to welcome Drew Monroe, who's the CEO and co-founder of Up Meals. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, thanks for joining. I'm super excited. Plus, you're in Vancouver, BC, which is, like we'd mentioned earlier, is one of my favorite places to visit. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to grow up, and it's a, it's a beautiful place to live. I'm happy that you enjoy it. Oh, excellent. Well, let's really learn a lot about you. You're a co-founder and CEO of Up Meals. And so before we get there, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of like your food journey, journey how you love food and got involved with all of this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, for food is my passion. I'm a professional chef. That's my background. Um, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I, I started a, a catering company and, and we grew that into a, a large business over the course of, of 10 years or so. Uh, and we specialized in sort of large corporate experiential catering. We would handle big events for companies like Facebook and Amazon and Ferrari and help them, you know, deliver these great experiences to their employees and to their customers. Um, but while we started Up Meals, we were actually started it to solve kind of a large and, and growing problem that we noticed. And, and that was that the workplace dynamic was changing. And this is well before COVID. People were uh, partial work from home, flex time. They weren't working traditional nine to five hours anymore. Um, and there was also a, a range of different uh, tastes and dietary preferences. So it was becoming actually exceedingly difficult for these large companies to take care of their employees using a, a traditional solution like catering or, or meal delivery apps. So, you know, we started Up Meals with the goal of, of using technology to help solve this problem and, and deliver value and, and vitality for these organizations and their, their employees. Awesome. So tell us what that means exactly, delivering these food solutions to these corporations. Well, we do it in a couple of really interesting ways. So the one thing that we learned from you know, our experience in catering was that you know, customizing and empowering another company's brand and their organization is, is a really powerful thing to do. Mm -hmm. So we actually developed the concept of having these nutritionist designed, chef prepared, healthy individual meals that were actually custom designed for each organization. So that was sort of the part where there's a connection now between the product and that, that end consumer, whether it's a customer or an employee. And, you know, and then the technology piece on top of that was, you know, how do we make it accessible, right? Uh, you know, companies aren't retail stores. There's no way for them to have this set up for hundreds of employees. So we developed our, our innovative smart vending machines that are, you know, uh, beautiful, branded for the actual company itself and are powered by software. So there's mm -hmm. also the ability for that employer to get great in analytics and insights into what their employees are eating, what's popular, and, and ultimately you know, help them have better, more productive and healthier lives. Awesome. I see this should be in hospitals. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That is absolutely one of the markets that we think this would have so much value, not just for the, um, for the, uh, the patients, but also mm -hmm. for the faculty. No, working exactly. All, all, uh, ex of course, working all sorts of hours, you know, you having access to, you know, beautiful, healthy, fresh meals designed just for you whenever you want them. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of value both in the workplace, but in, but in other markets as well. Um, hospitals, uh, we're actually installing these now into residential condominium buildings so that the mm -hmm. residents can have access to this whenever they need healthy, healthy meals. Oh, fantastic. Because I, I did see on your blog that you did, you just went to your very first residential uh, complex with like over a thousand residents and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's, that's right here in, in beautiful English Bay in Vancouver. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one of the largest uh, rent, rental buildings here. And, you know, wow. they're, everybody's working from home and people are staying at home more and people are reliant on, you know, a, a lot of these meal delivery apps, which are, mm. are accessible and convenient, but, but quite expensive. So mm. we wanted to make that connection between the residents, make it super convenient and also make it affordable for them to get access to this, this healthy, fresh, you know, chef prepared food. Okay. Now this is amazing. So you're getting it out of a vending machine, but it's chef prepared and fresh. I, I don't understand. How does that work? Like, what is your system in place? Like, I mean, if you're across the entire country of Canada, how do you do that? Well, we have what's what's a really great network of, of we produce in, in HACCP kitchens. HACCP, if you're not familiar, is like the highest level of food safety attainable. So it's actually much higher than 
uh, what a restaurant or, or a, you know, a caterer would have. It's similar to what a hospital would have actually to produce the food safely. So we have our kitchen here in Vancouver, but we also have, uh, are setting up partner kitchens across the country so that you know, mm -hmm. the recipes can be created using our software uh, that's managed by professional chefs and nutritionists. The food can be safely prepared. And then you know, the really intuitive part is that our software helps control the stocking and the inventory and, and knowing what's being consumed at what times. So we're able to you know, make sure that that salad is there when that person wants it. And that we're also stocking the appropriate amount, which reduces waste, which is also, you know, one of our other core initiatives. The, the goal being that, you know, there are fresh meals available whenever that, that individual needs them. And then how do you know what certain individuals at a certain workplace would like? How do you, how do you decide, oh, we should focus more on this or this type of palette or how? Where did, how does well, that all begin? That's a that's part of the process of involving the organization. So right before we even install the technology itself, we have a really intuitive questionnaire, and this has been designed by uh, registered holistic nutritionists, professional chefs like myself. So this actually guides that organization. They can send it out to all of their employees, all of the residents that live in that particular building, and it mm -hmm. guides them through to collect feedback on what they might use this for. What are some of their goals? What are some of their um, you know their their dietary preferences and and, you know, what are some of their eating habits and, and, and what are the desired benefits from eating healthier? So we're able to actually use that data, create a, a customized line of wellness products and then make it accessible to them. So, so each solution that we install is actually custom designed for that environment where we install the machine, you know, wow. and that's, that's really one huge differentiating factor between what we're doing with our innovative uh, machines versus, you know, really what the rest of the, the vending world does, which is to install a machine, hope it performs well, put it where the most people are and, and you know, fill it full of junk food. Um, we wondered how could the vending machine be, uh, the vending industry, excuse me, be disrupted and how could it be used for a, a better purpose instead of giving people access to chocolate bars and, and pop? Yeah, I would love to see this in schools, <laughs> honestly. An another, <laughs> another great application, of course. Um, you know, and, and we actually at Up Meals, we designed and we're, we're sending out through one of our partners here locally, that's a, that's a commerce platform, a line of plant-based kids meals. So oh. these are actually sort of fun versions of kid-friendly items, you know, a, a plant-based mac and cheese. We make a, mm. uh, a spaghetti with tomato sauce that has sort of hidden vegetables and lentils kind of blended into the sauce. So it's easy for the kids to, to love it. It's familiar uh, and, and they do very well. So, you know, we're hoping that, you know, once the schools start to fully, you know, reopen and get back to some sort of normalcy that this mm -hmm. is a technology that's going to be part of their safe return to school strategy or part of a safe return to work strategy. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Now, as far as the cost for, let's say, a school, because typically these guys are on budgets, um, you know, I think a, as an employer group would want to be healthy, but they also don't have necessarily a large money to spend on that. How, how do you work with keeping things in a, a tight cost so. Well, normally our, our solutions, because we have a really efficient you know, production model and an efficient wholesale model, our solutions actually are, are considerably more cost effective than hiring, say, a catering company, uh, which I'm very familiar with, and certainly more cost effective than using you know, a, a meal delivery app. So on, on average, our solutions, if you're looking at those two comparisons, are between 30 and 50 percent more affordable than, than using one of those comparable solutions. Um, you know, and, and with schools as well, I mean, everything can be, can be tweaked and customized based on, on their budget. Portions can be adjusted up or down depending on the, the, the age of the students and some of their preferences. Mm. So, you know, one of the things that we love about what we've built is that it's extremely fluid and flexible and it can fit into all sorts of different environments. And, and that's mm. the way we designed it. No, that's really awesome. What is so innovative? So, and then you, you, you mentioned one of the core values that you have is food waste, which for me is a big one too with patients because they're always saying it's it's too expensive to eat. Obviously, we eat a plant-based diet. It's too expensive to do a plant-based diet. It's like, actually, no, it's the cheapest diet if you do it right. But food waste is a big part of that. Any insight into how you're doing that would be awesome. Yeah, and, and I think one thing that 
you know, always really bothered me from, you know, a decade working in catering is, is when you're doing events and corporate catering, just the sheer amount of waste that is generated. And a lot of people don't realize that because, you know, the food is out in a, in a buffet or it's on, on platters and things like that. But when you think about it, you know, what's every caterer's worst nightmare? It's running out of food. So there's a, <laughs> there's a surplus, you know, that's brought. But the, 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 the main thing to consider is that food can't be repurposed anywhere. Once it's been out at the event and people have gone through the buffet, if it's leftover, it has to be discarded. And it always oh, wow. bothered me for so long that there was nothing to do with this, you know, with this perfectly edible food. So what we're able to do with up meals, because everything is individually packaged, safe, sealed, is any items that are sort of nearing their, um, their expiration, but they've passed, you know, optimal freshness where they can't be sold in a retail environment. We have partnerships with local charities here in Vancouver. It's the Vancouver Food Runners who actually repurpose those items in the same day to local charities and organizations in need. Um, and one of the really awesome things is that if we're working with a large organization or a company who has this installed, they can actually choose uh, you know, a partner charity that they want to reallocate the excess meals to. So truly we're creating a, a zero waste solution, which is something that was so important to me having been you know, really bothered by how much waste there was in the events industry industry for so long. Mm, that is amazing. So you're not only feeding your customers, employees or residents or whomever that may be, their, their consumer, but also feeding those who need it by, and also solving the problem of food waste. That's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really what we wanted to create was something where, you know, really what Up Meals is about is, is the access to healthy food. So the technology mm. is there, but there's a next level down with people that, you know, might not be in an environment where one of these machines exists. So having the, the kind of circular economy of how our waste works, being able to trickle downstream to those people that really need it the most, that was really important to us. And uh, so we're, we're really proud of those partnerships and, and how that's been set up so far. That is really cool. And so where did you come up with the name Up Meals? I, I was really curious about that. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a fine art to, to, you know, to name a company and a business. And, and um, you know, what we really wanted to focus on was number one, how it made people feel, the energy mm -hmm. and the vitality, you know, and all of the benefits, right? This is something that we made people like, we, we want to, to kind of get up and go after we eat an Up Meals product. And we want people to feel good and have energy and have vitality. So, you know, the name just sort of was a natural fit. Uh, we all settled on it and agreed upon it and, uh, and, and we love it so far. Oh, fantastic. And then, so I'd like to know a little bit more about you and just how did you decide to become a chef? Was this like, did you cook in the kitchen when, when you were little or how did that come about? You know, I've, I've always been passionate about food and, and I feel like, you know, that when I, when I was a teenager, the, the kitchen, when I first walked into my very first professional kitchen, you know, it was sort of a, a place where all of my creative outputs and all of my, you know, my, my hyperactivity uh, found a purpose and it found a home, right? And, and I felt like I connected to that environment. And then I, you know, I, I loved food. Um, I loved the creativity behind it. I loved the kind of pressure and the chaotic environment of a professional kitchen. And I found that I, th I thrived there. So, you know, I remember I was maybe 14 or 15 years old and I, I just decided, I said, that's, that's what I want to be. And I want to do something with food. Um, and, you know, as my career progressed, I was fortunate to, you know, to start a business and catering to work with some great clients. And, and then now up to starting up meals, you know, I became really passionate about, about health and wellness and vitality and the impact of food and food waste. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, it really spurred me to want to create something that could have the potential to have a much bigger reach than, than a localized catering company, you know, and so, so that sort of combination of circumstances was, was ultimately what led to the creation of, of Up Meals and, and our, our, our vision for what we want to do now and into the future. Yeah, I mean, the combination of healthy and delicious and convenience, I don't see there's any downside. It's a, it's a perfect storm. And I hope that's, <laughs> and, and you know, the, the thing that we always, we talk about here is actually the, 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 the junk food industry, the fast food industry, if you will, does an amazing job at that of making things affordable, convenient and accessible whenever you need it. So we thought, how can we go head to head and sort of make something that's different from what they're doing and make healthy food just as accessible as, you know, uh, eating fast food or eating junk food from a vending machine. And that's sort of the big problem that ultimately we're trying to tackle every day. Yeah, so I just interviewed an author, his name is Michael Moss, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but um, he wrote uh, Salt, Sugar, Fat, and all about the food industry, and he just wrote a new book called Hooked, and he's a Pulitzer Prize winner uh, author, and I'll tell you what, I, I read his book years ago, and I was like, oh my goodness, it's so 
frustrating to me as a physician to understand how the food industry is literally engineering our food to make us addicted and sick and profiting off our illness. And then, you know, myself included amongst all my other colleagues in the healthcare industry are left with what's left. These poor patients who are very ill have food addictions and really struggle. So I love the fact that you're coming from a, a way to compete with these, you know, I call them Franken foods, honestly. I think that's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that, that, you know, is, is powerful about why people get addicted to, you know, sort of unhealthy food is, is just because of how accessible it is and how convenient mm. it is. And often people are not in an environment where it's available to them, or it's not a part of the environment in which they work or they, they spend the majority of their time. So we thought, mm. why not, why not tackle the way that we're approaching this, right? Why, why not make it super accessible for people to to want to give it a shot and try something and and you know ultimately these are delicious items that you know taste just as good as some of these junk food options and make people feel way better about it so we want to build those habits in a, in a better way and that's sort of what we're trying to do excellent and as an entrepreneur myself having started companies and this one's our first it's a well it's not my first but the plant-based telehealth it's a national um, telehealth company where we work, do lifestyle medicine, where basically we work with people, nutrition and better habits and eating better and sleep and stress and all those things, adjusting medications, reversing, you know, chronic disease, like diabetes, hypertension. I mean, it's the most rewarding thing in the two decades I've been a doctor. Just, uh, it's just been amazing. Um, so, I mean, imagine it must be very rewarding to see this, but just speaking from the entrepreneurial component of this, I mean, this seems like such, I know what we were facing. It took us a year and a half just to launch. Just so we had to get over all the red tape and everything. But what the idea seeds, and how do you bring that to fruition? So maybe there's someone out there that also shares a passion of wanting to bring you know, health to a particular consumer or a particular niche. Do you have any suggestions or thoughts for people like that? Well, I think one thing that really helped us at Upneal you know, is acknowledging that we had a really big problem and a really, you know, an uphill battle with what we were trying to do is, is really connecting and being super clear about the problem you're trying to solve and then also what value it's going to have for, for your customers, right? And, mm -hmm. and we were fortunate that from my experience in the catering business, that was really defined for us. I knew exactly who wanted this and what the problems were. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times when entrepreneurs start um, with, with something, they start with the, with the idea and the idea is really important, but also trying to really clearly define the problem and also mm -hmm. who's gonna get value from using this is, is important in that it makes it seem more manageable. It kind of motivates you to keep going. Uh, it gives you that staying power to know, okay, this is not just me who's thinking this. Cause mm -hmm. when you start, usually most entrepreneurs, you're on your own. And then as you, you kind of get, you know, these people that connect with it. So it really mm -hmm. makes it uh, easier to overcome these massive challenges and obstacles that every entrepreneur faces. When you know that you've got a group out there that wants it and you know, you've got a problem that's worth solving. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's my advice um, when you're tackling a big problem and, and tackling, you know, starting something that's very ambitious um, is to not just focus on the idea, but also the other impacts. No, I, I think you're exactly right. And it's really helpful if you come from knowing the problem it's very intimately already. So mm -hmm. we had patients we knew that were seeking physicians who had this knowledge and ability and the same mission of getting off as many medications as possible or just keeping people well. And it's been a wild ride. We're almost a year old. And I'll tell you what, it's been a blast to be able to see that. But you have that two-sided marketplace unless you have the need from the patients, the need from the doctors who want to see them and you connect them. It's kind of like you have the people who want to, the food and then you have companies who want to provide it. I think that's fantastic. And how, how do you link them up? And how do you, how exactly. do you make them connect and add value for both sides? Because without it, you know, you, you, won't, you won't succeed. There needs to be mm. buy-in and a way to connect with both of those, those mm. people. Um, you know, and especially... Uh, you know, as, when there's technology involved, especially if it's new, I mean, probably your, yourself and maybe everyone, you know, I don't know, most people are used to using vending machines for, for just people respond in a similar way that you did, which is like, really like delicious chef prepared food from a vending machine. So be having to overcome that sort of like educational step um, is also a challenge. So you just have to be mm -hmm. 
you just have to be so relentless with with the value and, and what you're trying to offer and, and how, how much you believe mm-hmm. that you're solving this problem. You know, other, otherwise, you know, that's going to be kind of daunting and overwhelming for you if you're just <laughs> starting out with an idea. So that's, you know, that's sort of the things that we did uh, with Up Meals that allowed us to, to develop this, you know, big idea and be successful. Um, and, and also having great people and great partners that kind of mm-hmm. join you along the journey. You can't do it alone, as they say. So, so that's critical. Yes, we're, yes, yes. So our team is definitely, we're almost to double digits at this point. We're super excited. Yeah, it was just myself. Yeah, and our business team. So yeah, it's just um, myself and Anthony Masiello who's a business partner, has been a good friend. And he's like, Lori, we should start our own telemedicine company. I'm like, we're crazy. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is COVID has really changed the landscape of things as well. So where your product and innovation is actually probably even more helpful, just like you mentioned, people working at home and and doing different things, but it'll also be accessible and and good to have at a workplace. So I think that's another win-win situation. Yeah, I I think so. And, and, you know, also acknowledging there's another component, which of course, when we planned this, we started ideating this, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, right? Long before COVID. So this, this was not really, you know, the the safety component was not really what we were hitting on, but now Mm. having uh, the ability to have these machines with secure, safe, healthy food, you know, that when you get that bowl, there hasn't been 20 people who've picked it up, you know, at a retail environment, looking at it. (laughs) So there's, there's, there's that extra element of safety safety and security. Um, and, and that's something that's now extremely important, not just to us, but to our potential partners as well, uh, who are offering this to their employees or, or their, their customers. Wow. I didn't even think about, all, but I do know when I go to the grocery store, because obviously I shop in the produce section quite a bit. I do think about all the hands and sniffles and like, eh. <laughs> yeah. And then you think about all the ways that, you know, traditionally people were accessing food and I, all the things that we used to do every single day as a large catering company and people eating from buffets and sharing utensils mm-hmm. and eating family style. Like, you know, these things are wonderful, but when are they going to, when's that going to be a thing again? And, and, and if, will it be a thing again? So, mm-hmm. you know, these are all things that were, we were mindful of from the start, but we're also now, you know, extra mindful, not just us, but everybody um, mm-hmm. about how, how people are interacting with their food and how they're obtaining it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that's an important piece as we start to sort of reopen things and, and reintroduce people. It's getting that extra levels, levels of safety for everybody. You know, and I'm, and I'm just thinking of all the times that I really struggle with being able to get healthy. It's not when I'm at home or even when I'm at, you know, if I had a brick and mortar physician job, because I'd either bring my food or I know where to go is traveling, right? So Mm -hmm. you have grocery stores would be a great play. I'm just thinking of all the like interstate you have, you know, uh, gas station. I I can just see where all of that can happen because there's been places there's certain like gas stations we'd actually stop by because we knew there were more options that available, oh, really? like, like fresh fruit or something like that to grab. Um, you know, it's just a really fascinating way to think about that. And so how often are you having to redeploy someone to, you know, replace the food? I mean, that must be, I'm just thinking of all the mechanics involved. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great question. And we use, we use software to manage that component really well. So we, ah. we know uh, the machine actually tracks the, the expiration date of each item. It tracks what the current stock level is through our software. So we're able to sort of plan that restocking, you know, at that regular cadence that's required based on the consumption. So mm. there are some accounts that we, we might restock twice a week and some that might be four or five times a week, depending on, on the volume. Um, you know, and, and one of the, f- the features that it has that, you know, if there is enough times passed or there's a slight delay in us getting to the machine, the machine actually knows when an item has passed that optimal freshness and it will actually mark it as sold out. So there's no chance of, a, of an end consumer getting a meal that is not fresh. Um, wow. And those are the items we, we budget that extra day or so, you know, acknowledging that these are still edible, delicious items. They're just not quite at that freshness that a retailer would command. So mm-hmm. those are the items that get then repurposed through our partnerships with, uh, with the food bank and, and with other local charities that, that are instantly repurchased in that same day. Wow. And so I'd love to hear more also about how did you decide to partner with something like, <laughs> excuse me, the vegan food runners? What are they exactly? Are they 
next? Like yeah, so the Vancouver Food Runners is it's a local organization here, but I find most most major cities will have some sort of a um, you know a, a food bank program or a food collection program um, that's established. So we partnered with them specifically because you know they they use technology as well. It was a nice fit for us, and they also have a network of of partner charities that they're affiliated with. So the food mm. can be you know deployed and distributed amongst all sorts of groups depending on what the you know the the, the donation preferences are of the partner that we're working with so it was a nice fit for us um, and and they're able to be totally autonomous they can come and access the machines they have refrigerated vehicles on the road every day so wow. you know that was a really logical partnership for us uh, but our research is showing that you know, there are similar organizations in most major cities who are there to help and and they're looking for partnerships like this that is really cool and so then as far as your plans of growing and expanding what does that look like for you in the horizon we're, we're planning to deploy uh you know in other major markets in canada in 2021 uh, we'd love to expand to the united states um, actually one exciting thing that happened in the last part of uh, 2020 was that we we actually won an international food tech pitch contest, and this was sponsored oh, wow. by uh, by uh, by the Japanese government by an organization called called Agorize, and it was an international uh, food tech pitch contest. We were one of the finalists, and we actually won a prize that gives us. Uh, resources and support from the Japanese government and the officials to expand to the Asian market. So oh, wow. um, hopefully in the later part of 2021, we'll actually be opening up an office. We're identifying great partners there and, and starting to work, you know, in, in, it was kind of, you know, great for us to win this because Japan, of course, is the vending machine capital of the world. And, <laughs> and, and it was just kind of a nice little feather in our cap to have the, them uh, say, you know, this is a cool, innovative idea and something mm -hmm. different from what we've seen. So we're really excited for that as well. Um, so we have some pretty ambitious expansion plans in the next year or two, and, and we're really looking forward to it. That is that's fantastic. And I mean, I'm thinking, so I have kids that are growing up now, but as they went through college and now my daughter's about to graduate medical school and all these different places, I was also in the military. I'm thinking this would have been great in like totally. military settings and oh my goodness gracious, because let me tell you the food, no, no offense guys, but <laughs> the food that we got often was not palatable but, and, uh, and also <laughs> universities as well or you mentioned yes. right so yes. you know you know that and that's one of our, our our major target markets of course when they start to reopen and welcome mm -hmm. large groups of students you know if you're a student and you're studying and it's late at night i mean your options are so limited um mm -hmm. and, and also perhaps you know with a student budget your options are limited as well so you know, having that right combination of, of, you know, vitality and affordability and convenience is, is just a home run in my, in my mm. somewhat biased opinion for, for the, for the <laughs> universities. Um, but we're really excited to explore that market, you know, when, when they're ready to. Cool. And so have you had any cool stories or feedback from customers or, you know, other people like, tell, is there anything there that you'd like to share? You know, one of the things that I always love to see, given the fact that this, this is relatively new, we officially launched our first corporate partner in September. We've had a lot wow. of great feedback and, and, and success. And, and you saw we, have, we just recently launched in the residential sector. So mm -hmm. you're never quite sure when you're moving into a new market or territory how the response is going to be. So, you know, when we sent out our, our, our survey, our questionnaire to the residents, what's, what floored me was the sheer amount of responses we got with people giving super detailed feedback on exactly what they want and how they wanted it and and this is so cool and this is awesome and oh and, and asking questions too like are you sure it's going to be fresh so the the sheer level of of just engagement was was one of the the things that i'm most proud of because you know you get a a, a 17 question survey to your email most people aren't going to you know jump at the chance of filling that out it goes to the junk mail but we got hundreds of responses from these tenants and that just shows me wow. that you know, number one, people are really excited to talk and connect with things that are related to their health and to fresh food and it being mm. accessible to them. And, and number two, that there's, you know, people are excited about this solution coming to them. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's always one of my favorite things that I love to reference is just that that sheer level of engagement um, from from the end users who are using it. Absolutely. I mean, I can just see as a working mom. So I had three kids and you're tired and you're just like, I just want to get something on the table. Well, we're going to the up meals vending machine down the hall or wherever they are. And like, okay, everyone pick what they want, then we're good. And then this the mom or the dad or whoever feels comfortable and happy that feeding a nutritious meal to my family, yet I'm not having to worry about 
cooking and chopping and all that thing. So the convenience stores, I know over the many, many years I've talked to patients about nutrition and keeping this on a consistent basis and being very, very, you know, trying to be compliant to a healthy diet is time, convenience, cost, um, and it's all of that. So you've already done it. It's like also how to put together the food, but you've made, <laughs> I just keep seeing win, win, win on this. <laughs> yeah. And then there's also, you know, coming, we work with, with the plant-based, um, you know, side of things. All of our machines have, you know, a plant-based component to them. We, we partner with local plant-based meat companies here in Vancouver. We order their products and our chefs uh, turn them into beautiful, ready to eat meals. So, you know, probably mm. one of the things that you're used to he hearing is that, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, like a risk, right? You're going out to buy this like kind of expensive plant-based protein to serve it to your family. You're not sure if it's going to be a, you know, a dud or a flop and you got to spend time cooking it. And maybe you got to mm -hmm. cook it differently than how you're used to. So there's like a, a commitment there and it often can be, you know, off-putting. So, you know, what we're doing is kind of removing that barrier, right? Like if you want to try it for your lunch or for your dinner, you can buy an individual beautiful entree, heat it up. And if mm. you like it, keep trying more new things. So we're finding nice. that people that traditionally might be opposed to trying a plant-based diet or a plant-based mm. protein when they're going to buy it from the grocery store are yeah. actually open to trying it because it's a bit more low cost, low risk, and, and you know, it's easier to try things, uh, especially right. when professional chefs have prepared it for you. So, you sure. know, that's, that's one of the really interesting things that were happening is people are using it almost as a a testing ground for themselves to try things that maybe they don't want to try cooking themselves, which is interesting for me. Well, you at least know it's definitely probably going to taste good. And then, and if you don't like it, then it's like one meal, it's all good. No, it's cheaper than I'm sure a restaurant meal. So mm -hmm. absolutely. And that's interesting. Are you talking about the, like the vegan butchers in Vancouver? We're, there's guys? a couple companies that we partner with. Um, okay. So there's, there's one company here locally in Vancouver called the modern meat. Um, okay. And, they produce a range of, of really great, unique products. They even have a, a vegan uh, plant-based crab cake, uh, which is exceptional. Um, so we, we use, yeah, we create some really interesting stuff with some of their, uh, some of their products. And a lot of them are sort of riffs on, you know, comfort food, but done in a, in a healthier and, and plant-based way and using okay. whole ingredients. So awesome. those are items that have, you know, historically done very well, that are very popular uh, when huh. we can make connection to you know familiarity and 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 health um so you know those are partnerships that we love to explore so then so your local partners that you're they're preparing the food and delivering it or is it uh, so here I in mean, vancouver just... we are actually running our own production facility so we have our own oh, okay. facility here at our home base in our headquarters so we have our own team of of chefs and nutritionists and we're all designing the items and we're preparing you know, thousands of healthy meals every single week that are going out to to our customers and wow. to fill these machines. And and sort of as we expand, we'll, we'll find operating partners uh, that are mm. operating in a, in a similar HACCP environment and we'll give them access to our software and our system and our recipes and have them become a production partner for us so that we can oh, wow. expand this vision, you know, quickly without having to, you know, build a, build a kitchen in every market that we come in. We don't need right. to reinvent the wheel because ultimately, you know, we were a catering company that kind of figured this out. And, and we know that with our software, we can help other companies be successful too. So wow. now we're sort of expanding and having a really great economic impact. We're supporting local vendors and, and, and food production companies and mm -hmm. giving them access to, to our contracts and to our software and to our uh, revenue streams to help their businesses. Fantastic. Well, so you're supporting local business, you're feeding your people well. <laughs> I'm really impressed. And it's just, oh, thank it's you just, so much. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you need me to say that, but it's just, it's just a wonderful thing to see someone taking a problem and really turning it on its head and delivering things that are going to ultimately have such a positive impact on certain lives. I mean, it's just fantastic. So in, as far as anything else specific to your company or your journey, would you like to share with our audience? Well, I think one of the one of the main questions that we always get is like, what does the food look like, and what does the machines look like, and where? It so, if people are curious and, and your 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 listeners would like to see, they're welcome to check out our Instagram account. We have lots of pictures of the machines and and the clients and the food and the people behind it. So that's uh, our Instagram account is at upmeals. Uh, they can also check us out at upmeals.com if they want to watch videos or learn more about uh, about what all of this crazy stuff actually looks like. Uh, and and I encourage them to do so. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, I'd already seen, I guess I didn't even think about asking when most people listen to this via audio, but it is on YouTube as well. But um, there was also, you had uh, just mentioned the plant based, you had partnered with Plant X, which mm. I had never heard of before. And what is that going to entail, that relationship? So PlantX is a, is a great company. They're an up-and-coming plant-based plant -based commerce site. So their whole mm -hmm. vision is to try to become this marketplace for all things plant-based. And that's not just meals, but supplies for the home and cosmetics and, and things that are made in, in an ethical way, uh, in a plant-based way. So we partnered with them here um, and we're actually producing all of their meals for them. We're actually shipping awesome. those meals all across Canada, arriving right to people's doors. So, so we're not reliant on the smart vending machines. We have a retail side of our business as well. But wow. now as the Plantex brand has you know, become successful, they've, they've gone public as of last year and, and they're expanding now into like brick and mortar locations. We're also installing our smart vending technology. So now their customers can connect with the products you know, in, in, a, in a very retail capacity and, and have access to them whenever they want. So they're a great partner. Um, and, and they, they are, give us so much great feedback and insights and, and into the plant-based community. And um, everything that we make for them, of course, is, is plant-based. So we make mm. um, a whole range of products from salads to entrees to treats to even cold-pressed custom juices for them. And, and, and we ship it all across the country uh, every week. Wow. That is okay. That's really cool. <laughs> and I think I, they're, I just, and they're expanding into the United States as well. Mm. So uh, hopefully uh, before too long, you'll be able to, to order those products, those, those up meals prepared Plantex products uh, right to your door as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Cause I've been ordering actually. So my daughter's a fourth year medical student. She's graduating in a few uh, months actually and going to residency. But for the last year, actually over a year, I've been sitting <laughs> I've been actually ordering her meal prep kits to come to her door once uh, a week okay. and they're all plant-based. She's plant as well, or vegan as well. And um, it's been great because I at least know, because I've been through medical school, I understand. But I had kids then a little, they were very little, but I was just like, holy moly, this is fantastic. And so she's eating healthy. I feel good because <laughs> like... Just yeah, I, and the, and there's a, like meal kits. Meal kits are awesome, right? And yeah. like it's it's fun to have that connection to the ingredients and spend time cooking. And so yeah. you know we, but what we're what sort of they're finding, we partner with some of them here locally. Is that there's always kind of that like one or two nights of the week where you're like, I don't even have mm. time to cook, even if it's all done for me, right, and measured mm -hmm. out for me. So you know we're sort <laughs> of you know providing that ready to eat support for them to kind yes. of add on to some of their clients and their orders. Say look maybe Tuesdays is your crazy studying night. So you have it all done for you. Just pop it in the oven or the microwave and, and hit go. And you have a healthy nourishing meal at your fingertips. Mm. Um, so that's a, that's a part of the market that we're exploring too. Yeah. So I can okay, just in my mind thinking, because oftentimes when I'm seeing patients and I'm prescribing the plant-based diet, you know, with, you know, certain things, of course, like my diabetics, I focus on certain things or hypertension, but the majority of it's just, it's strictly a whole food plant-based diet. I mean, they're always asking, do you know of anyone that I can use that I can get started, right? So who should I go to? Where can, can someone mail these things to me so I don't have to worry about it? You know, I have that question really often. So I can see partnerships with physicians or clinics or hospitals too, to mm. help support their patient base. Um, honestly, it could be really cool so just keep that in mind too yeah, just on this side of that's things a, that's a fantastic idea and you know work, working in the the you know the, the medical industry the medical profession is mm. always something that we wanted to do right mm. we, we got we got great nutritionists and, and great chefs all linked up right from the very start we knew that was something that was going to be important for us and I think that that adds another connection is to actually connect to the the doctors and the medical professionals who are recommending this and, and becoming mm -hmm. a resource for, for them to help their patients. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, especially if it's already, you know, prepared. Like we've already partnered with a company called Plant Pure and we're going to be launching this program. Mm. And they do um, actual meal starters. So you still have to buy the fresh food and cook it. So there's that kind of that meal kit preparation type thing, which has already been in existence. But the to get really yummy food that's already entree put in the wherever heated up or whatever yeah that would be awesome because that is the next level that i'm seeing that there's definitely a need and patients would definitely be open to so anyway 
just keep that in mind. Absolutely, I will. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready to yeah, the United States. I will. And I will. You'll be my first call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yes, because we are across in every state in the country, wow. so that would be Congratulations. awesome. Congratulations! Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So fantastic, and this was absolutely delightful. Oh my goodness! So I can't wait to go to Vancouver just to see one of your machines and like i want to see what this yeah does. please this look us up yeah look us up we'll be happy to show you yeah <laughs> oh, fantastic well thank you again for sharing your time and your expertise and your energy with us and i could see that you you definitely have a ton of energy which i think chefs are one of the hardest working group of people i've ever seen i have we're, several we're chef all friends. crazy yeah oh my, <laughs> your hours are are insane you you're in the this you're just and it's such the passion to create this wonderful meal that you're going to be nourishing someone's body is just it's just really fun to watch so thank you for your work and bringing this to the marketplace i'm super excited for you guys awesome thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed it thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed that video before you go though please hit the subscribe button and the alert button so you will be notified whenever we upload any new videos on monday we upload the healthy human revolution podcast now if you'd rather listen to the podcast you can find it on all the major platforms such as itunes google play soundcloud and even spotify on Tuesdays, we upload The Doctors In. This is where I answer your questions. Thinking of that, could you please comment below any questions you might have about health or wellness or any topics that you would like me to cover? Now, if you're looking for more resources on how to start a plant-based diet, sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, anything regarding wellness, we've got you covered. Check out HealthyHumanRevolution.com. And again, thanks for watching.